I would assume he's not the type of guy to let the entire turn meter run out, no? Yeah, look at this. He's purposely taking up the entire turn meter. You would think that somebody who has more of a upstanding would be a little bit more respectful, but I guess not. You're already well positioned in terms of like live arena and you insist on purposely taking up the entire turn meter for what? I let you keep all your fucking mythicals and you decided to be a complete asshole. Fuck you. I love my wife. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's just like, you, holy fuck, dude. <laughs> this guy's got the carnage thing. So it's like the higher you go in live arena, the harder the enemies get, right? It, it gets to the point where it's just like, there's not really any point in trying to compete and taking any of some of the fights too seriously because you get, get paired up with guys like this almost at 5,000. Seriously, they need to add another tier to live arena like live arena platinum tier or something like that because this is just ridiculous dude a plus two fully blessed armands we are going to be absolutely boned so siffy rotos combo let's you know give you guys something right Just try a little bit siffy rotos let's do makage and harima might have to um go for an actual fight here not trying to just get quick wins in get quick wins in so i wonder who he's gonna pick it'd be actually pretty nice if uh he chose carnage because like i've never fought him before so it'd be interesting you know why is he taking so long you would think that uh this guy with the avatar and and everything already knows knows uh what is he going to pick? I, I would assume he's not the type of guy to let the entire turn meter run out, no? I hope not. Is he doing it on purpose? The world may never know. I've always seen this GLFU as good luck, fuck you. Holy moly, maybe he's purposely trying to just run it all out. Run the time leader uh, thing out just to see if he's going to scare me away. You know what? I'm more than likely to stay just to be a little bit petty i'm not, I'm not gonna let you scare me away we're not doing that we get it dude you got mythicals super cool it's probably got insane gear too all right so let's start out by can we even get rid of their stone skin it's kind of an iffy thing here let's get rid of aphidius and let's hit um alaz with the a2 maybe we might be able to break through stone skin no, probably not i guess not so I think what Crixia does is puts everybody's skill on cooldown, opposite end and their end too. Come on, dude. What are you doing? Okay. And uh, so Arbor is not going to be able to do anything against Alaz's stone skin. Is this guy transformed too? Mesomo? That's his name. His name clicked for me. And I think he does like this um, swipe. Really? This guy, at this high of a level, is purposely draining out the entire turn meter. So he does a self buff. And what, what is his other thing? Come on, dude. Seriously? Like, you, you already have a, a sick chance of beating me. You you already have it. It doesn't make any sense. Like, you're already well positioned to beat the shit out of me in terms of, like, live arena. And you insist on purposely taking up the entire turn meter for what? Like, what was, what's the point, dude? What's the point? Why? Why are you doing this? Alright, so let's hit the A1 there. Nice, nice. Get rid of that. And let's bring up Harima. And let's bring up everybody else's skill. Is this, um, what does this A1 do? Oh, that's very nice. Jesus Christ, dude. Seriously. you I mean, you guys saw that too, right? I'm not the only one, right? He's being a fucktard, right? A complete asshole, right? For no good reason, right? You already got mythicals. You're already about to win and you insist on being a fucking dick go fuck yourself asshole jesus christ you know what you're you're gonna be on my you're the you're gonna be the uh 
Here, I let you keep all your fucking mythicals, and you decided to be a complete asshole. Fuck you. All right. 30 live arena mission battle thingies. Um, uh, we're doing live arena. So, strap, fuck, strap in. So, I was asked to try and include a little bit about my thoughts whenever I'm choosing champions and my entire process with that. He chose Arbiter, so immediately I'm thinking I'm going to choose Tormund, but I also need a speed lead. And I also need somebody who goes fast. Siffy is my my first fastest champion. Shuzen will be my speed lead. Now, it's also smart to pick Armands because there's a chance he might pick Armands, but I just saw that he has Harima, which means that I'm going to choose Mikage to prevent him from doing that combo because that's a combo that I often do myself and one that I often see other people doing using the Mikage Harima combo as well as the uh, Shuzen. Actually, I'm the only one that I, I know who have, I, I'm the only one I've seen do this, Shuzen and Georgid. But Siffy Rodos is an obvious, awesome combo. Now, we can get rid of their... Well, okay, so here's the hard thing. I don't know which one to get rid of, but I'm thinking Harimu might be the best one to get rid of. He got rid of my speed lead. So we're going to go in with Siffy. Hope for the best. The only damage dealer that they have right now is Sun Wukong. So priority is going to be taking care of Sun Wukong. Actually, that's not true. Odin does damage too. Now, if we can survive long enough, we can make sure that Rotos can charge up and do what he needs to get done. Let's speed boost. Hopefully we can uh, move fast enough before Odin takes a turn or anybody else takes a turn. Might try to boost turn meter. We're okay. So what do we do here? Well, let's get rid of Odin because he's about to take a move and I can't let him stun. We're going to get rid of Arbiter as well. Now all we have to do is worry about Sun Wukong. So let's hit the A1 and just pass that here. We're going to hit the A3 uh, here, giving George an extra turn. And it kind of just worked out in my favor there. Uh, like halfway through that, I just started uh, kind of giving a, a mental blurb out to myself. I was just like, oh, well, I, I just remember George could, George could um, hit through Stone Skin and deal with it that way. But, um, you know, sometimes you just get lucky, right? That's that's raid. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you have to really think hard. Sometimes you think too hard and then things are just really lucky for you and it just works out. All right, Serg Shadow. Flawless souls. Let's go it in. Let's uh, let's not go, go it in. Let's get it in. No Diddy. Or maybe I'm gonna get it in like Diddy. Sun Wukong, interesting first pick. I can't fathom why he would choose Sun Wukong first, but let's go ahead and choose our Arbiter Siffy combo. A lot of what I'm learning in Live Arena, again, I'm not somebody who plays Live Arena that much, is most often times, if you can go first, you're golden. For the most part. It's not always the case, but for me, my success has been coming from going first quite a bit. Shuzen, Georgid, awesome combo. You can expect that Hefrak is going to be in stone skin. Makage might go fast. Sun Wukong could also be an issue if he hits hard enough. I don't know what, what uh, this blessing is here. So I'm not worried about Hefrak. Okay, this seems like it's not going to be too hard. We might be able to ensure that we keep everybody here if we pick Armands. Armands is going to be the bait pick. Now, who do we get rid of here? I would say we get rid of Mikage because Mikage still has a great ability to stun us in the event she's going to go fast, but I don't think she's going to go fast. He picked attack, which means he's not expecting to outspeed us. I do believe that we're going to win this one. I have a good reason to believe. Okay. So I can almost guarantee that he's going to be taking up the entire turn meter, but I have things to do. I'm playing Black Ops uh, Zombies right now, so I just I don't really have the time to to play with him like that. So we're going to get rid of his UDK, we're going to get rid of his Makage, and we're going to hit the A2 on Duchess, getting rid of the reaction, as well as uh, boosting Harima's defense, because every time she hits with that... Um, a2, she's able to increase her own defense up to 50%. So Harima's an awesome champion, especially going up against a demon spawn. Basically, we're going to have to wait until the stone skin drops off on Morty Macabre. And this fucking asshole is trying to be cute. So really, we're just going to be waiting until Georgia takes his um, next turn. So somebody had 
um, stones or uh, sheep. So of course we're gonna get sheep. Beautiful, love to see it. And because we don't have any boosts, we're not able to um, give Georgia that increased attack that we're looking for, but that's okay because, so uh, let's see. Let's just hit the A1 for now. Get rid of UDK. He might hit the A2, hoping that we're going to counterattack. I don't understand what people's, uh... <sighs> what am I saying? I, I, I know what people's thought processes are when they're trying to purposely run the turn meter out. They're, they're trying to, uh, you know, yep. So he banked on it and he got it. So let's just hit uh, Duchess for now. And there's no point in boosting turn meter or, or adding anything because we don't have, um, it's gonna block buffs. So we're just gonna hit the A1 on Duchess for now. And we might be able to stop Makage from taking a turn if we hit the A2, but it's a chance. And I don't know if that's a chance I'm willing to take because if Mortu gets his skill in, his passive, then George is probably SOL. If he doesn't already have his passive available, but um, it's kind of kind of iffy here. Um, you know what? We're gonna have to risk it. We're gonna we're gonna risk the A3 going up against Makage to try to stop Makage. And now I'm gonna start taking up my turn meter so that he knows that I can play the game too. There you go. Okay, so we weren't able to knock Makage out, and that's fine. We'll figure it out. Oh, okay, so he knows that I'm trying to play that. It, that's the funny thing. As soon as people are like, oh, they're going to take up the entire turn meter too, they immediately start um, just letting it run. That or he's just letting it run on auto because after a while, uh, Polarium will just throw it on auto. He probably just sat there and walked away. Um, it doesn't make any sense. I feel like it, it would just go a lot faster if you just um, ran with it. So let's hit the A2. Might have to just risk it. Actually, no, we can hit the A1 on Mikage. And then hopefully he doesn't have his, um, what do you call it? His passive up. Okay, so that's fine. Now we have to take this out. Strange how we didn't remove any buffs with her A2. Okay, now we're just going to have... Finally, you're out of sheep. Good job. Let's hit... Um... Yeah, let's hit the A3 here. And then we're going to have to try to boost here. But yeah, it's better than trying to hit that. And then can we push turn meter back. Let's boost. And then we're going to hit the A1. Negative affinity, so that might be an issue. But we'll see. And then we can give this to Harima. And it's pretty much a clap from there. But I'm going to let him sit there and um, you know think about what he did. I want him to watch as the timer goes down because he knows it's about to come. Two, one, and zero. Let it ride. Good job, dude. All that for nothing. All right, going up against Doofenshmirtz. Schmirtz, Schmirtz, Doofen, uh, the guy from, um, what's that? What's that one show? 104 days of summer vacation and school comes around just to end it. I forgot what that show was called. But um, we're gonna bring in Inithwi again because we have Sun Wukong, we're gonna block his revive um, so he doesn't ever uh, come back. We don't have to really worry about that. Now we just have to worry about Thor, but uh, I'm not too worried about Thor when we have um, some some really good, um, what do you call it, champions here, especially with an AOE coming out of um, Inithwi. Inithwi? Inithwi, Blood Twin. So that was a good hit, of course. As long as Siffy is around to bring the people we need to come back, we don't have to worry about the sleep here. Um, let's see here. Good try. We'll bring him back, and then we're going to have to hit the A3. Try to get Thor out of the way. Oh, I guess, yeah, we have to worry about Aostrid as well, but um, yeah. So, Anithu is pretty good, especially with the decrease of uh, max HP. Good run, good run, good run. I had to ban this Joffred dude, because uh, he can actually be pretty annoying with his passive. So we got Duchess, Rhonda, Sun Wukong, and Gala Longbraids. Fully blessed and a plus one. Very nice. Oh, I, I forgot to press confirm. My bad, bro. 
So I think we already know how this is going to turn out, especially without that passive from from Georgia, uh, not Georgia, Joffred. Um, it's going to probably go in our favor. Plus, he's a level 86. Uh, even if he's got, um, you know, really strong characters, he probably doesn't have uh, really strong gear to compensate. So the biggest threats right now are going to be Gala and uh, Rhonda here. So let's get rid of the damage dealers. Uh, if Wukong can't strip our buffs, oh, 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 oh. I was going to say, uh, if Rhonda is able to take a turn after Wukong strips our buffs, then we have an issue at hand because of Rhonda's A2, who's also a really good counter against Wukong also. So he comes back, of course. She's probably going to revive the other two. And then Georgid will probably have his A1 only available. Oh, never mind. He's got his A3. I guess the refresh happened, but still... Um, without buffs up, it's not exactly the, the easiest task for him to, to, to smash through, which is kind of weird, right? Because he's rocking over 7,000, probably almost 8,000 um, attack, and still he's not able to uh, to hit hard enough without the buffs. So it really goes to show just how, how uh, important having buffs are. And just waiting on the stone skin from Duchess to go down here, hit, hitting the A1s here, and then trying to get the Veil to come off of Wukong. But it's not coming off. I feel like Arbiter might need more accuracy here. If he hits the A2, there's a good chance that we might be screwed. Okay, so we got rid of her. Let's boost turn meter and also add increased defense. We're going to try and push turn meter back of uh, to Wukong. Take his uh, HP out. Let's not let Gala take a turn. And oh, never mind. Georgid. There you go. So we're going to get this, and we're still kind of far a ways away from getting the frame that we really want. Okay, so because we don't really have to worry about um, getting outsped, I'm pretty sure we're, we're going to take the first turn here. We got rid of Makage because she just had a guaranteed chance of fucking us up with that sheep. We're risking it with our mons, but we're going to be okay. So um, Odin is here. And Odin also presents a problem because when he um, kills one of us, he can also revive. But if we have a Neathwe in here, we might just be okay. So two damage dealers gone, really only worrying about Odin here. And if our Mons takes his turn, his A2, then uh, we're not going to get stunned, which means we're going to be able to take our turn. And then Odin also um, is, you know, he's got a good chance of removing our buffs. Um, our Mons can sheep. If I were him, I would probably sheep Rodos, but he sheeped Siffy. We also don't have to worry about um, Rodos's debuffs because when the both of them are together, Rodos is able to um, have those buffs automatic or debuffs automatically removed. So now all we're doing is just waiting for uh, his A three to come back, and you know he just took a turn, two turns, and now all we have to do is wait for him to leave. There you go.